they shouted for three days and three nights. People came from everywhere. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, friends and guests, what I've shared with you was a brief quote from an onlooker to one of the most influential events in religious ranks that took place in our history. Many of you may have never heard of a gentleman by the name of William J. Seymour. He was a one-eyed minister born to two parents who were freed slaves in Centerville, Louisiana. He was very passionate about ministry. There was one occasion where William J. Seymour was speaking and a woman was so moved that she asked him, would you please come speak at our church in Los Angeles, California? After some reluctancy, he accepted and was on his way to Los Angeles, California. Upon arrival, he was met by the pastor of the church, Pastor Julia Hutchins. She was excited about the word that he had to share. She looked forward to it because the person that invited him said his character was impeccable. His message was undeniable. So here it was, Sunday morning. William J. Seymour takes the pulpit and he preaches about the Holy Spirit being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Needless to say, people were ecstatic about the message. He was scheduled to speak the following Sunday. Excited, he showed up to the church the following Sunday only to find that Pastor Julia Hutchins had padlocked the front door. Apparently the message of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues didn't go over so well with the leaders. However, there was one gentleman by the name of Edward Lee. He felt something when William J. Seymour spoke. He invited him to stay with him at his home in California. William J. Seymour took him up on his offer and they would hold weekly and sometimes even daily prayer meetings. All of a sudden, things really began to take off. People from everywhere, even more so, started to come in. It was growing and growing and growing out of Edward Lee's house. So much so that they had to relocate. And interesting enough, upon relocating, they found themselves at 216 Bonnie Brer Street. This is where things really begin to take a dramatic turn. William J. Seymour had been speaking for five weeks straight. And on the third day of a 10-day fast, Edward Lee started to speak in tongues. William J. Seymour was so excited, he began to share the word with everybody. And three days later, William J. Seymour began to speak in tongues. People couldn't, they couldn't believe it. It was amazing. Every night, there was a different speaker at this house. Every day, somebody was being filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. It was so amazing what God was doing. As one onlooker would say, to finish the quote, it was Easter season. People were stirred and came from everywhere. As soon as people walked in the yard, they could feel the very power of God. The whole city was stirred and nobody was ever the same. It was so many people at this location that the very porch that William J. Seymour would stand on flat-footed and preach the uncompromising gospel, it collapsed. All was not lost. Not a single soul was hurt. Not a single scratch. Nothing. Fast forward, they moved to another location. 
a rundown, shoddy building that if you saw it from the from the passing highway, you wouldn't think anything good came from it. There was one stained glass window that let you know that it had some type of religious value. And it was on Azusa Street. And thus we have the Azusa Street revival. Nobody was ever the same. Leaders came from far and wide to experience the presence of God. The authentic presence of God and the evidence of speaking in tongues was second nature. Remember Julia Hutchins, the very woman that padlocked her church and kept William J. Seymour out? She showed up with her congregation. And the first day she was there, she spoke in tongues, followed by the rest of her congregation. This movement was so powerful because when the Azusa Street revival began to taper off, the very people that were there went back to their own homes in their own cities and their own congregations and they began to preach about the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Ironically, the very people that would usher in this movement, which some say is the birth of the Pentecostal church from this Azusa Street revival, were immigrants and poor people. You see, in these meetings, it started out just with black people, then a few white people. But before long, there were Hispanic people, there were Asian people, there were Arabic people. There were so many people that came here and all for the common goal of experiencing Jesus. Some would argue that speaking in tongues is not genuine. There were skeptics. There were people who didn't believe at all. And I can't speak to them. I can't say if they're right or if they're wrong. But I know, for me, I'm thankful that a one-eyed preacher born to two freed slave parents stayed in California and sowed seeds of the Holy Spirit that I'm reaping the benefit of this very moment and I know those that know him not just William J. Seymour but Christ will also reap the benefits Mr. Toastmaster